Hello folks, I hope you're having a good day today. Hey town, take a look at the next of my Cthulhu Mythos stories that I'm unpacking for you as part of my sort of Cthulhu Mythos October, where I'm taking a look at a story basically every other day for you, or for the next forever, <laughs> and so forth, until I feel like I've full, I fully sort of explored the topic and we've kind of left. So what I want to take a look at is the next August Dirtle story that I have planned for you, and I'm going to tell you the name of it because it is such a long name that you would probably forget it. Um, this was not a well-titled story, August Dirtle, The Thing That Walked on the wind. Um, I'm just going to call it the Windwalker uh, for short, but it's published by August Derleth um, and so forth in the, uh, the the mid the mid 30s and so forth. And this is going to be the first of two stories that kind of um, will unpack a character he's going to create for us called the Windwalker. And the second story we'll take a look at right after this uh, called Ithaca, uh, where we take a look at, at it being developed more for you. Basically, what's happening in the Windwalker is you're going to get um, a short kind of view for who the Windwalker is and so forth as a part of the character. So let's take a look kind of what happens in a review. So there's not a whole lot that, so this basically in here in this collection, for example, which is published by Del Rey uh, and so forth. It's not that long. All right, I won't take you that long. It's not going to keep you up all night or anything like that. It's a mighty 12 pages long. So it's not going to take you that long. Um, and so 12 pages is probably gone. And it's not, this isn't a long writer that like a Clark Ashton Smith or an H.P. Lovecraft that's dense <laughs> in prose that might take you a little longer, more like 20 pages or something like that. You'll be able to finish it in a half an hour easy. Um, there's not a lot of plot that happens in it either. It gets 12 pages long. Uh, plus also there's not a whole lot of stuff that happens. There's really only a few, a few central major points that's going to happen. You're going to find out that um, a person's died. Um, you're going to follow it around. Basically it's taking place in the Canadian uh, wilderness um, out near, town, near the town of Stillwater. Uh, and Stillwater itself has been uh, sort of evacuated. Um, and so you're going to be following along with a sort of mounted expedition. Uh, you're going to follow this, try to find out what happened to the people of Stillwater and so forth. Uh, you're going to find out that some of the people had disappeared. Um, you're going to arrive to Stillwater. You're going to find um, that three of these people are going to fall from the sky. Basically, two of them are going to be still alive, but barely from the cold. One of them is dead from the cold. One of the two that survives is going to die before they wake up. But the other one's going to experience some major uh, issues <laughs> by our constable that's investigating the investigation. Um, some major sort of dreams and so forth before he dies too. And that'll be the last one that dies. And they sort of find. Um, and the constable, when he was looking up to see him fall down from the skies, a big giant brush of wind, uh, also saw something up in the wind himself, walking and moving um, among it too. Um, as, he, as, as a cold, br uh, cold uh, uh, breath of wind came down from above, he looked up just naturally and saw these things. Um, so anyway, um, he uh, will then start to investigate it and so forth, try to do some investigations. There are going to um, our, our delusions and some of his investigations are also going to uncover things like the Chocho people, the Plateau of Lang, Cthulhu, stuff like like that, um, things that are in the Cthulhu mythos that's going to kind of trigger some of his investigations. Um, also, a doctor is going to confirm some of the things that they said, some of the researches, and what had happened to him physically. Um, and this constable believes that they have been physically, after doing some research, believes that they've been physically sort of taken away um, and moved somewhere else. Um, and then near the end of the story, he's going to disappear, um, and there are going to be boots near him and so forth. Um, his body is going to turn up a long time later, um, dead like the first ones, frozen out in the snow with some weird and unusual things on his body. Um, not like wounds or anything like that, but like some items on his body that are weird and arcane. And so forth, and there's your story. Okay. So there's, there's the, the thing that walked on the wind, <laughs> or I'm going to just call it the wind walker. We're just going to move on. Now, I think that this story is better than the previous story by August Derleth and, and actually Mark Scherer that we looked at last time, Lair of the Star Spawn. Uh, Lair of the Star Spawn is still, I think, early enough in August Derleth's career that he doesn't understand how to explain a coincidence. Uh, <laughs> and he just kind of assumes that you as a reader either are going to just assume that there's a reason for it, or you're just not going to notice uh, when there's a plot hole or something like that. And here, there, the, the plot hole is explained, so it's not a plot hole. For example, in the previous story, um, why uh, would Dr. Lothan know these various things? Why would he uh, head on out? Why would he assume that these things are going to be the case? Why would they come that quickly? Why would our main character be killed? Why, why would the entire party of people be, but not, but not Eric, why is he surviving? Why would they heal him? If they want to, you know, you kill a lot of these sorts of things. You know, there are a lot of these plot holes that aren't explained at all as a part of that story. But here, the one thing that happens by coincidence is that our our, our Mountie investigator constable um, is looking up at the same time to see these things being fallen down, and he sees the walker on the wind, and that marks him, and that's going to be the result of him killing. Now, it's not just a coincidence. He actually feels the cold wind brushing against him from above and looks up naturally. It's a natural response. Sure, I would too. 
I get it. So you can see that August Derleth is growing as a writer and so forth, which I appreciate, and, I, and so I, and I appreciate that. Um, there's still not a lot that happens in this story, although, again, it's a 12-page short story. You wouldn't expect a whole lot to happen. So, but there's not a whole lot of plot in this short story, um, and so forth. There's more of a feel for what's happening, uh, the walker on the wind, um, and the local areas, and so forth. And you're going to get a chance to feel um, the local people that are supporting this around. You're going to find out there's a local cult, um, and so forth, around the town of Stillwater. It's going to be fleshed out. So it's a little more world building, um, uh, and so forth, than there is anything else. It's definitely, definitely uh, deep in the Cthulhu mythos, and so forth. And we're going to find out who this character is in the next story, Ethical which we'll look at next. Um, and that'll be my final sort of August Durleth story for a while. So there you are. I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there. Let me know what you think about it in, in the comments below. Did you read uh, Ithaca or not? I'll link you to it, um, obviously, below. So you can check it out. Um, not Ithaca, I'm sorry. That's the next story. <laughs> the Thing That Walked on the Wind. I swear that title's so long. August Durleth, you got to find it. you got to come up with a shorter title for your stories. Um, anyway, uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'm happy to engage with it further. If there's any details you want to talk about or unpacking uh, and so forth. Do you think it's better than I do? I, I think it's okay. Uh, I don't think it's great. I don't think, but it's not bad. Um, I would I would not come to you with a story that I didn't think was worth reading. Um, like there are stories you will never, I'm never coming to you with, even though they're not bad, or because I just didn't like them at all. Right? If I didn't enjoy it at all, I'm not going to ever come to you with it and say, "Hey, check this out." But I'm not going to come to you and say, "Oh my God, this is the best story ever." Right? <laughs> Either. You know, it's a good, it's a good, it's a writer early in his career. He has some writing mistakes in it still, although it's not as bad as the previous one. And the next story will be better. Um, so and you get kind of a chance of three stories in a row to kind of get a feel for, you know, August Durleth as he's growing as a writer, um, over about an eight year career from the first story to the last one. So there you are. And again, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I'm happy to engage with them further and so forth. And Hey, if you like this, please feel free to hit that subscribe button because we have a lot of these sort of classics of fantasy, science fiction, and uh, horror, um, that I try to unpack for you or that are forgotten, um, and forgotten treasures that we may have all forgotten about, um, and had collective amnesia with. So this channel tries to unpack those for you. So if you like this, there's going to be so many more to follow. And hey, if you watch this video all the way to this end, I want to thank you so much because we have saw such busy days in our lives and so many things happening. So the fact that you spent this time with me, that's something very humbling. and I do not take it for granted. Thank you for your time again.